Today we're going to do an overview of how the SPA sequencer system works. This system can be used both for 3D previs, storyboarding, or really anything you can do in Blender that you would like to do at a sequence level. As an example, I have a simple 3D scene here, and now I have the ability to adjust the timing of the shot both from the placement here and its placement here. So I could adjust the timing of the edit, have things happen earlier in the edit, or having things happen at different times by slipping the shot within the edit. So now this edit will start with him halfway up. Let's have it start earlier. And now look at that. I can switch my camera here. So I could go in here and select camera three if I wanted to, or switch back to camera two. And the purpose of this tool is so that you can work inside your scene and your edit at the same time. So now let's go over this tool in some more detail. And like I mentioned in my last video, this is a custom version of Blender developed at the Spa Studios that is uh, released and you can download it now, but it's for testing only. So these tools can also be used in vanilla Blender, but I'll speak about that at the end of the video. So to begin, we can just go to the splash screen and open the layout file. And here we can see we have a unique setup where these regions are from the main scene. And this region is actually the edit scene. So let's explain how this blend file is set up. So under the outliner, we can see that we actually have multiple scenes inside the same file here. If I were to remove this override temporarily, and this is a unique feature to this version of Blender. But in the file, there are three things. An edit scene, which contains a strip. The target of that edit scene. For each strip, you'll have a scene. So here's one of my 3D scenes. And then we also have a rendering scene, which is similar to the edit scene, but contains no strips yet. That'll be used by the tool later on. So to have the file set up, uh, what a user can do is open a sequencer region and then select the edit editing scene for this region. And now we have the ability to navigate uh, multiple scenes from our sequencer. We are now going to look at how the template system works. So to create some templates, you just go into the spa settings and define some scenes uh, with a matching prefix. Then what you can do is just Go ahead and delete what you have here. And when we create a new shot, we can choose to create a new scene along with that shot from a template that we define. So I selected a 2D one here. And to see my 2D background, I'm just going to hop into the material tab. And then inside here, I could actually just hop in here, start drawing. And, and in this example, I'm creating a new scene for every strip I create. And now I can go ahead and start. I can rearrange these however I like. I can even mix this with 3D so I can go shot new. And now I'm jumping from 2D scenes into 3D scenes. We're going to now learn the basics of how the sequencer works. Okay, so we're going to start with adding a new shot. So to add a new shot, I can click here shot new, and this will add a new shot to my existing scene. So I'll click OK. And this is going to add a shot because I'm using the existing scene, it will add shots sequentially. If I added shots from new scenes, they would all start at frame zero. That's the default behavior. So let's say I add two shots. Now, as we can see here, I have three cameras. So if I navigate to my second shot, I have a board up here. And this panel tells me what camera is available. So I can come in here and select camera two. Now I've got a closer shot. And then if I move to the third one, I could go in here and select camera three. And now I have the closest shot. And now one, two, three. To switch into a new scene, I will have to add a new scene. So why don't I go in here and I'll click shot and new. And I'll use from a template this time and I will do my 3D template and I'll add a new one. And now going into here to distinguish this scene, I'm going to add instead of a 
cube, I'm going to add a sphere. I don't want the auto key on. Let's just remove these keyframes. As you can see, I have my dope sheet right here. I can see the animation of my objects. And now I have three shots in one scene. And then why don't I make it? Two shots in this next scene. So we'll add one more shot here. And this is going to be from the existing scene. Exactly. And then on this guy, we'll I'll use camera five. Okay, and now while we're navigating between these scenes, we have a distinct group of cameras in our collection. And this group can be shared among some shots. And then I have new cameras and new objects in this second scene. And I am even able to start intercutting them together. So I'm in the cube then sphere, sphere, and back to the cube. And as you can see, the timing of our original shots has been maintained. To get into how timing works, I'll navigate to our last shot here, and we can look at how this extend clip will allow us to extend out the timing, and this slipping clip will allow us to readjust the timing. To change the shot scene, so maybe I choose that at the end here, I didn't want the cube, I would like to go back to the sphere. I can always come in here and pick the other scene. And now I have only two shots of the cube and many more shots of my sphere. And then I could always change the camera again. And because this is a full 3D viewport, I still have access to lighting and the entire 3D package. So if I wanted to adjust the lighting on an object, I could do that. Okay, so now let's look at some of the settings here on the side. So in addition to our setting, our scene override, we choose the master scene, which is the scene that provides the synchronization. So in our case, it's this edit scene. When disabling synchronization, uh, it won't update the 3D view when we navigate the timeline. Keep grease pencil settings will help maintain any drawing settings like brush settings that you have while you're navigating the timeline. Bidirectional allows us to control the edit scene also from the dope sheet when we disable bidirectional. We can navigate in here and even loop back this one shot without affecting our overall timeline. Synchronize all windows will impact if you have any additional main windows opened. And active follows playhead will keep the active strip updated with the playhead. Now let's move on to rendering settings. So we can choose between images and movies, but movies send, tend to be the ideal render setting. Viewport or internal, meaning the viewport would render from this viewport and internal would be rendering from the actual render engine that we have set. We can override the render engine from EV or to workbench. And then we can choose a fraction of our current resolution. Setting this file pattern will change how the files are rendered. Each shot should be rendered into its own strip these strips can then be copied into their own edit scene. And we can choose to only render some selected strips if we choose, or the entire sequence. Once you're ready to render, just select the sequence batch render option. And when your render is complete, if you selected the option, you will find your rendered clips inside the rendering tab. I have decided to create my own fork of this add-on, an add-on I'm calling Spark Sequencer. It has some very minor changes to make sure that it continues to work with a vanilla blender. And I will try to continue to maintain it going forward. If you would like to use it or use the original spot sequencer in vanilla blender, the process is exactly the same. Synchronization works slightly differently in this version. Now, instead we can navigate to a shot in the edit scene while having our edit scene pinned to this workspace and then switching to our normal workspace, we can jump into those scenes. We still have this panel here on the side, so we can still use this panel to jump from scene to scene. But when we play back now, we're always going to loop within the same scene. But if there are any other strips within our current scene, we can use these shortcuts to click and jump to them. Or by navigating with our arrow keys slowly, we can jump between shots from the timeline like that. So it's still not impossible to navigate the 3D view, 
but to play back the entire animation you will have to come to the edit scene and that's the only difference using uh, this system inside vanilla blender or master blender as opposed to using spa's custom version of blender so if you want you can download spark uh, from my github page here